You're going to cut it here. Don't eat them. cheap sausages. Life's too short. So the snap, all oh, that. For the last six years, I've thrown into my body all the rubbish, you know, the burgers, the kebabs, the sausages, and the pies. Had I not come on this, I would have probably had a heart attack in the next three or four years, if not sooner. How British is seen is this. The Queen, Queen's House, taxes, everything. And it's only made more British by the presence of this. The sausage, the banger. A great British food, of course. And best thing about it, it's cheap. Sometimes worryingly so. In fact, you can buy a pound of sausages for less than 50p, which makes them cheaper than dog food. So, should we be worrying about the great British banger and just what's in it? Let's find out. Do you like sausage? No, thanks. Are you sure? Do you ever think about what's in sausages? Reconstituted rat guts, that kind of thing. That's not nice. I trust the manufacturers. Do you? If you intellectualise about sausages, you're in big trouble. This is disgusting. Not these. I do worry. You do worry? We do. Why? What do you think might be in them? All sorts. It's not prime rump steak, is it? It fits off the toenail and face and tongue. So it sounds like people are worried about sausages. Frankly, so am I. But it doesn't seem to matter how worried we are. It doesn't stop us eating them. They are still the nation's favourite dinner. So I'm going to try and settle this, discover the truth behind the horror stories. I'm going on a journey to find out once and for all what's inside our sausages. I've come to meet a specialist butcher. Now, his name's Bill, and he claims to know exactly what's in a cheap sausage. Rather worryingly, when I spoke to him on the phone, he also said he hopes I've got a strong stomach. Right. Bill. Good morning. How are Hello. You? Welcome Good to morning. the sausage kitchen. Thank you very much, I think. Right, sausages. What's in them, and should I worry? That's the question. Oh, my Lord. Right, I think I can see how this is going to go. Now, can you actually make me a sausage? We will, yeah. But and I want you to make me a really rubbish sausage. Basically, the worst possible legal sausage. Within the law, which yeah. says there's 42% meat Minimum. Okay, so that's what we're going to construct. That's and then exactly we'll see what we're going in. to do. All right, then. that's a head. Now, yeah. a head meat is wonderful nutritionally, but do we want to know that it's in a sausage? You're going to cut it here. Don't right, eat then. cheap sausages. Life's too short. I don't like the way this is going. Oh, no. That's pork belly. So yeah. that's not a bad thing, surely? No, it's not. But what happens, we don't need the skin it goes into cheap sausages. That's just... That's it's just skin fat, and fat. It's yeah. just a kind of mess of all of, the stuff of, we saw. Of the odd bits. They wouldn't use just that. No. So what they need to do is add a token amount of meat. So we're way up 42% meat. That's the minimum they need. Yeah. Now, a huge amount of rusk is used. Our rusk soaks up three times the amount of water. We're going to put in now what the equivalent of three times its weight in water. That's a lot of salt. That is a lot of salt. They don't have to declare how much they have. So we could add a bit of this colouring, make it more pink, and it sells better if it looks pink. Here we go. This is quite exciting, actually. We have created something dreadful. Truly a rubbish no, sausage. Have you ever seen sausages that pink and that awful? Like right, Honda creation, good. this? Yes, you certainly may. The result of our labours. Right, Bill, cook it. Okay. Because regrettably, I'm going to eat it. Check this out, Delia. Mmm. A 
I don't want to eat it. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it looks, it looks like a sausage. Try it. Go and eat it, man. I'll do it. it tastes like a sausage. But sausage. <laughs> most people wouldn't know the difference between that and a real sausage. Hence, the market is always there because they can be sold cheaper. Yeah, that tastes like a sausage. What Bill hasn't said is that labelling laws have tightened up. So if there is anything like ear or snout in your sausage, it will be labelled head meat. That's what you should look out for. And to be fair, you're actually unlikely to find it in your average supermarket sausage. But of course, you don't always get to read the label. Not if you eat sausages in cafes or restaurants or at work. So what I want to know is, if I am eating the nasty bits unawares, is it actually going to do me any harm? So, I'm going to a very healthy-looking cafe to call some nutritionists. Are sausages bad for us? Really? 12 grams in a 45-gram sausage? You've done that before you've even got to the end of breakfast. So the fat is the worry. Now, the other thing when we made our sausage was we put um, a lot of salt. Really? Do you eat them? Hang on, this is all changing. It's beginning to look as though there is something worrying inside sausages, but it's not what I thought. The head meat, the nasty stuff, that's not really the issue. It's, it's kind of unsavoury, but that's not the worry. The worry is the fat and the salt. So he's suggesting actually a limit of one to two a week. You're not going to believe this. There is as much fat in a pork sausage as there is in this dollop of cream, and as much salt as in seawater. So, if you eat your sausage in terms of fat, there it is. In fact, hang on, better still, I'll just finish it off, look. There's your salt as well. That's nice. You've got a sausage. We made art. So is my big investigation into sausages turning into one that's really all about fat and salt? And are all sausages really that bad? And is it just sausages that I should be worrying about? So I've arranged to meet one of the nutritionists I spoke to on the phone. She's called Amanda Hamilton. And we're going to go shopping and we're going to do what we should do every time, which is pick up the packets of sausages and read them and actually see what's in them. What are the potential bad effects of sausages on our health? Basically, saturated fat lines your arteries with a kind of plaque, which over time builds up and can cause real heart congestive failure, heart attacks, generally give you a pretty bad bill of health. The other aspect is the salt, which causes you, over time, to have a higher blood pressure, which, same kind of thing, it can affect your heart, it can affect the function of your heart, and tends to lead to things like strokes. So, all in all, the two real bad things that we have in, in modern day diets are contained in pretty high levels in sausages. So this type of sausage, yeah. for example, can't even call itself a pork sausage because it's got less than 42% meat in it. So it's just a random so it's just... sausage. So these ones, these have less than 3% fats. They're obviously marketed towards those people that still like their sausages but want to have a healthier diet. Right. Top notch pork sausage. 81% meat, there you Is see. 81% meat, it says in the front. Oh yeah. This is really what you should look for if you're looking for a decent sausage. The other one to go for would be organic, but they're very, very pricey. However, all of them, you have to remember, contain saturated fat. You only get saturated fat from animal products, and red meat in particular can be very fatty. So what you're saying is sausages are a potential artery clog? Yes, in quantity, anything like a sausage or even a pie, or a burger, anything containing that amount of saturated fat and salt, it's a potential artery clogger, yes. OK, so from what Amanda said, it looks like it really isn't just sausages I should be worrying about. It's pies, burgers, anything, in fact, with processed meat in it. Well, in my research, I'd come across a bloke who lives on all that stuff, and I want to know what Amanda makes of him. Meet Big Ron. One, two, three, four... Five slices of bacon, fried bread. One, two, one, two, three, four sausages, fried onion, fried mushrooms, and chips. I'll be good today and I'll grill the sausages, shall I? Oh, I'll 
my bottle of sandwich later. Oh, look at that. Hey, what? One, two, three, four. Well, he'd definitely be in my extremely high risk category. I'd be shocked if he didn't have high blood pressure and if he didn't have a cholesterol problem. So, be keen to mm. maybe work on that a little bit with him. Well, then there's somebody else that I'd like to. This is Jason. Jason is very different to Big Ron. Welcome to my fridge. Just got salad, 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 stir fry vegetables, spring onions, low fat yogurts, more bags of salad, and more salad. Just eat salad. If we take Jason, healthy eater, Ron, very unhealthy eater, and we swap, swap their diet. It's a great trial because what it should show is the dramatic effects of diet. Okay, I've seen someone give up an unhealthy diet before, but I've never seen anybody actually choose to take it up. This should be interesting. Before my experiment can begin, I send Ron and Jason to be weighed and to have their blood pressure and cholesterol measured. So how healthy are they before we actually start? So Jason, um, I'm afraid there's nothing dramatic here, nothing exciting as far as the programme goes because you're perfectly healthy. Your cholesterol is at a nice healthy level and your blood pressure is completely normal. Moving Ron, on. If I foot eight and over 20 stone, then you do fall into the category of being clinically obese. Um, but even more worrying in some respects is your blood pressure is very elevated. Your cholesterol reading was high, as again you might expect with the kind of diet you're eating. What's going to be interesting is to see if this makes a difference, because if this does make a difference in 28 days in both directions, then we will have learned a lot. And you know, then you've got to consider medium and long term what the effects are going to be and how much difference I'm sure you can make one. Now this, I how greasy it was. this is, you know what that is? You put <laughs> chips in it, full of oil, you take that, Jason. Doesn't need cleaning well, by the way. It's lovely. That's a deep fat fryer. <laughs> That's your new best friend, mate. Oh, there you That's go. Like that. and That's for you. I've seen one of these before. Good luck. It's okay. a steamer. That's going to be your new best friend. OK, so have you got this straight? Jason and Ron will be swapping their diets meal for meal, sausage for salad, for an entire month. And now they need to brief each other. OK, this is a bit of a test. <laughs> Sausages. The sausage department. Now this could, this could really kick off. You know when you do the fry up? Yeah. Four of those. Or these. All of them. Go on, tell me. No, you can have all of those. In one meal. Yeah. Lunch. Or if I'm out of football, snack. Ah, look now. Quarter pounders. Oh, right. Bun, burger, cheese, burger, cheese, and then a the bun. I like that. Okay, so you have two of those. It's, it's like a, a big, half pounder. Like a Big Mac. Technically, mega. yes. Yeah. It's a Ron's Big Mac. What would you have with that, then? Chips. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I mean, he lives on sausages and pies. A whole pie at a go. Pork pies, you know, this big. Gone. Hold up a pie and say, yeah, I'll have two of those that are sitting, and it'll be 50 grams of fat and two grams of sodium or salt. And from what I've found out already, that I would worry about. So it'll be fascinating to see what difference it makes. Well, I feel like I know what's going to happen to Ron when he gives up his sausages and pies, if he sticks to it. But as for Jason, it'll be the first time I've ever seen what happens to someone who actually chooses to go from a healthy diet like his to a diet high in fat and salt. So I'll be keeping a very close eye on this. Day one, then, of 28, and my diet swappers have their first meals. All right, Ron. Oh, that's a lot of veggies. And that is going to be my dinner tonight. Three, before, <laughs> before. <laughs> I shall now go and eat. This is my tea. Because I really don't like pork pies, I thought I might change it and go for a scotch egg instead. I have noticed, though, that um, I've got a bit more flatulence than I normally have. Day seven, and the effects of the diet swap are beginning to kick in for Ron. Hello. It's Friday night. End of week one. And by God, am I starving! And after seven days, it looks like Jason is beginning to put on weight. 
And when I first started the swap, I could just, I could get about two inches gap around my waist, and now I can only get an inch. I can get my thumb down there now. Homemade vegetable and mushroom stir fry and brown rice. Bacon. Day 10, and Jason and Ron return to have their blood pressure and cholesterol measured. And you're not going to believe this. Well, it's looking like after just 10 days, Jason's blood pressure and cholesterol are soaring. He's also depressed, lethargic and constipated. Uh, Ron, why did you ever do it? What made you choose this food? And as for Ron, his blood pressure and cholesterol, after just 10 days, is already lower than it has been for 10 years. I feel thinner, and people say that I do, and my clothes are fitting me, you know. Three weeks in, and while Ron's blood pressure and cholesterol drops yet again, Jason's remains high, and his muscle begins to turn to fat. No, I don't like it. I've always been pleased at the fact that I have a decent shape. I didn't have that two weeks ago. Yes, but perhaps a more immediate worry, Jason still hasn't been to the toilet now for a week. I feel really down, I feel really low. And I think I'm going to have to start taking some, some sort of mild laxative. I'm beginning to feel a bit bad. He's having a horrible time. On the other hand, Ron's now in better health than he has been for years, and he makes it to the end of the swap without a pie, sausage or burger passing his lips. I haven't had chips, I haven't had pies, I haven't had sausages, I haven't had fry-ups, I haven't had bacon. But by God, it was a struggle. I know it was tough for both of them, so was it worth it? Well, one of the most incredible things is that it didn't even take 28 days. It took 10 days for the results to prove themselves. And after just 10 days, Ron, your blood pressure was down dramatically and your, and your cholesterol had dropped also. And Jason, it was the opposite for you. It says here that Jason's blood pressure after 10 days was at the upper limit of safe. And yet when you started, his blood pressure was fine. And your cholesterol is now higher than Ron's. Right, OK, so, so we've got the desired effect. effects. We so. have had, yeah. absolutely, within 28 days, you imagine this over 28 years. It's going to be a long day before I have sausages, bacon sandwiches... Well, it's over burgers. now, don't worry, it's finished. Thanks. You can stop now, honestly, Jason. We've put these guys in a really extreme situation, but that's what people are playing at every single day. So maybe they're not as aware of how awful they're feeling because they're not doing it to such extreme levels. But underlying, things like your blood pressure will be creeping up, your cholesterol will be mm. creeping up. And it's once you stop and you start to feel how you can feel, that's the biggest learning that yeah, you'll go through. So Ron, having ended it now officially, you're now embarking the rest of your life, what have you actually learned about sausages and about pies and processed meat, all the stuff you used to eat? I'm not going to say I'm not going to eat another bacon sandwich or a sausage roll or a burger again, but I'm going to classify them as treats. No, maybe once every fortnight, maybe once every three weeks, not once every hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pleased. My investigation has had a genuine effect on Ron. And it looks like it's had an effect on Jason too. I've got the deep fat fryer here. Here it is. And I'm going to chuck something heavy on top of it. Because I don't want to have deep fat fryers anymore. But the deep fat fryer is going to go! <laughs> the most important thing I learned from this swap is that we do have a choice. We can look at the back of the pack and make an informed decision about what we buy. But does that mean I should stop worrying about sausages? Well, in the catering industry, your food doesn't come with a label in a cafe or even a school canteen. Guess what one of the favourite foods on the school menu is? Yep, back to the sausage. They're cheap, they don't come with a label, and some kids are eating them every single day. So, on the next leg of my journey, I'm going to find out if school sausages are also packed with fat and salt. I'm actually going to Scotland because, bizarrely, Scotland has got the schools at the very top end where the kids pay the most for the sausages and the schools at the bottom end where the kids pay the least for the sausages. I'm going to 
get hold of the actual sausages somehow, visit the schools, buy them, whatever, and then we'll send them off to the lab and we'll find out just what's in them. We all know kids are getting fatter, but get this, Scottish kids are now fatter than American kids. So I want to get hold of their school sausages and test what's in them. I shall acquire them by whatever means I see fit. School number one, street value of two pork sausages, 70p. Amount of fat and salt, undisclosed. Have you got the goods? Yep. Now, this is important. There's nothing special about the schools I'm visiting. These sausages could be served in any school, any canteen. They could be what your child is eating for their school dinner. I'm going to Dumfries because that's where some of the schools where the pupils spend the least on their lunches are, and I want to see what's in the sausages there. My mission continues. One headmaster tells me that he buys his sausages for as little as 2p each. He warns me they may be difficult to come by. The plot thickens. It seems that some of the pupils at some of the local schools also had misgivings about sausages and they want to speak out, but obviously they do so by getting into trouble. So, what I've arranged is to meet them, but they're going to remain anonymous. So just how bad are the sausages in your schools then? Pretty bad. Pretty really? Bad, they're yeah. disgusting. How many times a week would you eat them? I try to avoid them where possible, but maybe once or twice a week. But some kids, do they eat them a lot? In the mornings, yeah. they're quite popular for breakfast. Do you ever stop and think what's in them? Yep, and it kind of disgusts me. Mm. How do they cook them? Uh, they're deep fried, I think. That's not going to help, no. is it? No. I'm grateful to the kids for speaking out. I must get a sausage from their school. A battle has now begun in Dumfries and Galloway. The local council tell all the schools not to give me a sausage, which means I resort to guerrilla warfare. I may have started sausage wars, but I'm going to finish it. I bought them. But I had to do it in catering quantities, which meant 1,600 of them. As I leave Scotland with my smuggled sausages, I wonder just how bad they'll turn out to be. Will they be stuffed full of fat and salt? Could they be the first step on the slippery slope to turning the kids into Big Ron? I'm still trying to find the country's worst catering sausage. And there is just one other group of people who are as vulnerable as school kids, hospital patients. Are they eating sausages in there? And if they are, surely there'll be a healthier version, low in fat and salt. I call the country's four biggest hospitals, and guess what? Sausages are available to patients at every single one. So it's up to me to find out what's in them. Finally, for purely selfish reasons, there is one other sausage I want to test. These are your actual BBC sausages. Um, that should be enough. Lid on, sample collected. Take these back. Spare ones. Oh, thank you. They're all you. contaminated, thank you very much. <laughs> Can you eat sausages? Yeah, I love sausages. You know, especially big ones. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave that there. I'm, I'm going now. So, my catering sausages went off to the lab. Remember, I got them from schools, the country's biggest hospitals, and the BBC canteen. The results are through, and before I get to how much fat and salt is inside these things, I find out there is one sausage amongst them that is, by any standards, an embarrassment. First of all, gee, now it calls itself a sausage. 16.5% of it is rusk, that's pure filler. 52.5% of it is water, and it came from the BBC's own canteen. I spoke to the BBC, and since we filmed this, they say they've now replaced the embarrassing sausage with one with a higher meat content and less rusk. Success! But I'm not that bothered about meat content. The sausages I tested are all legal, but so what? 
you know my bag, fat and salt, that's the real worry. On average, the sausages contained up to 25% fat and up to one gram of salt, putting them on a par with an average supermarket sausage. But the point is that these don't come with a label. I collected this from a school in Edinburgh, and the good news is their sausage was about the best we tested. It had the lowest salt, one of the lowest fat, and the highest lean meat content. So congratulations to you. Now this I collected from schools in Dumfries and Galloway. You may remember the council said, now you can't have the sausages. Well, I can tell you, your sausage secrecy was unnecessary. This actually turned out to be one of the better sausages with one of the lowest fat contents. So well done. Mind you, the label on the box that says for best results, deep fry does kind of let it down a bit. I contacted Dumfries Council with the results. They said they offer a variety of healthy options to the kids along with the sausages. I think that's a cop-out. And then we get to the unhealthiest sausage of the lot. This is from Leicester Royal Infirmary. 28% of this is fat. That's twice the amount in a donut. Better still, of that 28%, 30% is saturated fat, which, as we now know, is the worst kind. Now, Leicester Royal Infirmary is the third largest hospital in the country, 1,055 beds. When I spoke to them on the phone, they said, ah, oh, well, we've taken these sausages off the patient menu. Yeah, they've stopped serving them to patients in their beds. But if those same patients can stagger down the corridors to the canteen, they can still buy this rubbish. I can't believe that hospital patients are eating this stuff without knowing what's in them. So I call up the catering manager of Leicester Royal Infirmary and ask him very nicely whether he'll take those sausages off the menu and replace them with something more healthy. Hello. My name's Richard Hammond. Um, I'm, I'm calling from the BBC. I've got hold of one of your sausages for a programme I'm making about sausages. Yeah. Now, um, the results are back from the lab and all I wanted to do was to tell you that actually Yours didn't do very well. In terms of an economy sausage in a, in a, in a retail environment, what people want to put on a sandwich, then we, we did do a panel against four or, four or five other economy sausages, and we went with the consensus. But look, if you serve them in your canteen, I mean, your, your, patients, your patients could get hold of them, couldn't they? And if you've got, like a, if you've got a heart condition... Anybody could eat in our restaurant quite happily. Are you going to change it? Um, there is no plan to change at the moment. All I'm saying is... They're pretty poor, even though they're legal. All right, bye-bye. Well, there you go. I wouldn't eat them. I'd like this canteen, and in fact all canteens, to put up a sign saying how much fat and salt is in their sausages so that we can make informed decisions. I started this journey worrying about the grizzly bits, but I'm ending it thinking that for all sausages, pies, burgers, the lot, there should be maximum levels of fat and salt set, and that manufacturers shouldn't be allowed to exceed them. Because if we all keep eating this fat-rich, salt-stuffed food, it's looking like by the year 2020, a third of the British population will be clinically obese. As for me, well, I'll still eat the occasional sausage, but that will be it, an occasional sausage. Should I worry, I'll let someone else have the last word. I have got three wonderful grandchildren and I want to see them grow up and give me great-grandchildren. If I'd not gone onto this programme, I don't think that I'd be sitting here in three or four years' time saying the same thing. What is MRSA? All I want is how you can catch it and how you can avoid catching it. We're not messing about here. I'd do it wrong and I can infect somebody. I would not like to go into hospital with that level of contamination. That has left me really properly, deep down inside, scared of it. <laughs>